Introduction to Drum Taps by Walt Whitman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Drum Taps by Walt Whitman. Introduction from the Times Literary Supplement, April 1st, 1915. When the first days of August lowered over the world, time seemed to stand still. A universal astonishment and confusion fell as upon a flock of sheep perplexed by strange dogs. But now, though never before was a St. Lucy's Day so black with absence, darkness, death, Christmas is gone. Spring comes swiftly, the almond trees flourish. Easter will soon be here. Life breaks into beauty again, and we realize that man may bring hell itself into the world, but that nature ever patiently waits to be his natural paradise. Yet still a kind of instinctive blindness blots out the prospect of the future. Until the long horror of the war is gone from our minds, we shall be able to think of nothing that has not for its background a chaotic darkness. Like every obsession it gnaws at thought, follows us into our dreams, and returns with the morning. But there have been other wars, and humanity, after learning as best it may, their brutal lesson has survived them. Just as the young soldier leaves home behind him, and accepts hardship and danger as to the manner born, so when he returns again life will resume its old quiet want. Nature is not idle even in the imagination. It is man's salvation to forget no less than it is his salvation to remember and it is wise even in the midst of the conflict to look back on those that are past and to prepare for the returning problems of the future when whitman wrote his democratic vistas the long embittered war between the northern and southern states of america was a thing only of yesterday it is a headlong amorphous production a tangled meadow of leaves of grass and prose but it is as cogent today as it was when it was written to the ostent of the senses and eyes, he writes, the influences which stamp the world's history are wars, uprisings, or downfalls of dynasties. These, of course, play their part. Yet it may be a single new thought, imagination, abstract principle, put in shape by some great literatus and projected among mankind, may duly cause changes, growths, removals, greater than the longest and bloodiest war, or the most stupendous, merely political, dynastic, or commercial overturn. The literatus who realized this had his own message in mind, and yet justly. For those who might point to the worldly prosperity and material comforts of his country and ask, are not these better indeed than any utterances, even of greatest rhapsodic artist or literatus? He has his irrefutable answer. He surveys the New York of 1870, its facades of marble and iron, of original grandeur and elegance of design, etc., in his familiar catalogical jargon, and shutting his eyes to its glow and grandeur, inquires in return, are there indeed men here worthy the name? Are there perfect women? Is there a pervading atmosphere of beautiful manners? Are there arts worthy freedom and a rich people? Is there a great moral and religious civilization the only justification of a great material one? We ourselves in good time shall have to face and to answer these questions. They search our keenest hopes of the peace that is coming. And we may be fortified, perhaps, by the following queer proof of history repeating itself. Never in the old world was thoroughly upholstered exterior appearance and show, mental and other, built entirely on the idea of caste, and on the sufficiency of mere outside acquisition, Never were glibness, verbal intellect, more the test, the emulation, more loftily elevated as head and sample than they are on the surface of our republican states this day. The writers of a time hint the mottoes of its gods. The word of the modern, say these voices, is the word culture. Whitman had no very tender regard for the Germany of his time. He fancied that the Germans were like the Chinese, only less graceful and refined and more brutish. But neither had he any particular affection for any relic of Europe. Never again will we trust the moral sense or abstract friendliness of a single government of the old world. He accepted selections from its literature for the new American Adam, 
but even its greatest poets were not America's, and though he might welcome even Juvenal, it was for use and not for worship. We have to learn, he insists, that the best culture will always be that of the manly and courageous instincts and loving perceptions and of self-respect. In our children rests every hope and promise, and therefore in their mothers. Disengage yourselves from parties. These savage and wolfish parties alarm me. Hold yourself judge and master over all of them. Only faith can save us, the faith in ourselves and in our fellow men, which is of the true faith in goodness and in God. The idea of the mass of men, so fresh and free, so loving and so proud, filled this poet with a singular awe passionately he pleads for the dignity of the common people it is the average man of a land that is important to win the people back to a proud belief and confidence in life to rapture in this wonderful world to love and admiration this was his burning desire i demand races of orbic bards he rhapsodizes sweet democratic despots to dominate and even destroy the future vistas the throes of birth are upon us Allons, camarado, he could not despair. Must I indeed learn to chant the cold dirges of the baffled? He asks himself in drum taps. But wildest shuttlecock of criticism though he is, he has never yet been charged with looking only on the dark side of things. Once, he says, once before the war, alas, I dare not say how many times the mood has come. I too was filled with doubt and gloom. His part in it soothed, mellowed, deepened his great nature. He had himself witnessed such misery, cruelty, and abomination as it is best just now, perhaps, not to read about. One fact alone is enough, that over 50,000 federal soldiers perished of starvation in southern prisons. Malarial fever contracted in camps and hospitals had wrecked his health. During 1862-65 to 65, he visited, he says, eighty to a hundred thousand sick and wounded soldiers comprehending all slighting none rebel or compatriot it made no difference i loved the young man he cries again and again pity and fatherliness were in his face for his heart was full of them mr gossy has described the old grey as he saw him in eighteen eighty four in his bare littered sun-drenched room in camden shared by kitten and canary he sat with a very curious pose of the head thrown backward, as if resting it one vertebra lower down the spinal column than other people do, and thus tilting his face a little upwards. With his head so poised, and the whole man fixed in contemplation of the interlocutor, he seemed to pass into a state of absolute passivity. The glassy eyes half-closed, the large knotted hands spread out before him, he resembled in fact nothing so much as a great old grey angora tom alert in repose serenely blinking under his combed waves of hair with eyes inscrutably dreaming as i stood in dull deserted mickle street once more my heart was full of affection for this beautiful old man this old rhapsodist in his empty room glorified by patience and philosophy whitman was then sixty-five in a portrait of thirty years before there is just a wraith of that feline dream, perhaps, but it is a face of a rare grace and beauty that looks out at us, of a profound kindness and compassion, and, in the eyes, not so much penetration as visionary absorption. Such was the man to whom nothing was unclean, nothing too trivial, except pale poetlings lisping cadenza's piano, who then apparently thronged New York, to take to himself intensest indomitablest of individualists he exulted in all that appertains to that forked radish man this contentious soul of mine he exclaims ecstatically viva the attack i have been born the same as the war was born i lull nobody and you will never understand me maybe i am non-literary and undecorous i have written impromptu and shall let it all go at that let me at least be human human indeed he was a tender all-welcoming host of every man of his idolized if somewhat overpowering american democracy man in the street in his swarms poor crazed faces in the state asylum prisoners in sing sing prostitute whose dead body reminded him not of a lost soul but only of a sad forlorn and empty house it mattered not 
he opened his heart to them one and all i see beyond each mark that wonder a kindred soul oh the bullet could never kill what you really are dear friend the moon gives you light and the bugles and drums give you music and my heart oh my soldiers my veterans my heart gives you love yours for you he exclaims welding in a phrase his unparalleled egotism his beautiful charity yours for you whoever you are as mine for me it is the essence of philosophy and of religion for all the wonders of heaven and earth are significant only because of the me in the centre this was the secret of his tender unassuming ministrations he had none of that shrinking timidity that fear of intrusion that uneasiness in the presence of the tragic and the pitiful which so often numb and oppress those who would willingly give themselves and their best to the needy and suffering but whose intellect misgives them he was that formidable phenomenon a dreamer of action but he possessed a sovereign good sense food and rest and clean clothes were his scrupulous preparation for his visits he always assumed as cheerful an appearance as possible armed with bright new five cent and ten cent bills the wounded he found were often broke and the sight of a little money helped their spirits with books and stationery and tobacco for one a twist of good strong green tea for another a good home-made rice pudding or a jar of sparkling but innocent blackberry and cherry syrup a small bottle of horseradish pickle or a large handsome apple he would make friends what i have i also give you he cried from the bottom of his grieved tempestuous heart he would talk or write letters passionate love letters too or sit silent in mute and tender kindness long long i gazed leaning my chin in my hands passing sweet hours immortal and mystic hours with you dearest comrade not a tear not a word vigil of silence love and death vigil for you my son and my soldier and how many a mother must have blessed the stranger who could bring such last news of a son as this and now like many other noble and good men after serving his country as a soldier he has yielded up his young life at the very outset in her service such things are gloomy yet there is a text god doeth all things well the meaning of which after due time appears to the soul it is only love that can comfort the loving he forced nothing on these friends of a day so many of them near their last farewell a poor wasted young man asks him to read a chapter in the new testament and whitman chooses that which describes christ's crucifixion he asked me to read the following chapter also how christ rose again i read very slowly for he was feeble it pleased him very much yet the tears were in his eyes he asked me if i enjoyed religion i said perhaps not my dear in the way you mean yet maybe it is the same thing this is only one of many such serene intimacies in whitman's experiences of the war through them we reach to an understanding of a poet who chose not signal and beautiful episodes out of the past nor the rare moments of existence for theme but took all life within and around him in vast bustling america for his poetic province like a benign barbaric sun he surveys the world ever at noon i am the man i suffered i was there he cries in the song of myself i do not despise you priests all times the world over he could not despise anything not even his fellow poets because he himself was everything this verse sometimes seems mere verbiage but it is always a higgledy-piggledy santa claus bagful of things and he could penetrate to the essential reality he tells in his drum taps how one daybreak he arose in camp and saw three still forms stretched out in the eastern radiance how with light fingers he just lifted the blanket from each cold face in turn the first elderly gaunt and grim who are you my dear comrade the next with cheeks yet blooming who are you sweet boy the third young man i think i know you i think this face is the face of the christ himself dead and divine and brother of all and here again he lies true poetry focuses experience not merely transmits it it must redeem it forever from transitoriness and evanescence whitman incontinently pours experience out in a niagara-like cataract but in spite of his habitual publicity he was at heart of a shy brooding impassioned devotional type 
in spite of his self-conscious arrogant virility he was to the end of his life an entranced child he came into the world saw and babbled his deliberate method of writing could have had no other issue a subject would occur to him a kind of tag he would scribble it down on a scrap of paper and drop it into a drawer day by day this first impulse would evoke fresh poemettes until at length the accumulation was exhaustive then he merely gutted his treasury and the ode was complete it was only when sense and feeling attained a sort of ecstasy that he succeeded in distilling the true essence that is poetry and in stopping it in a crystal phial of form the prose of his specimen days indeed is often nearer to poetry than his verse much of the time he sleeps or half sleeps i often come and sit by him in perfect silence he will breathe for ten minutes as softly and evenly as a young babe asleep poor youth so handsome athletic with profuse beautiful shining hair one time as i sat looking at him while he lay asleep he suddenly without the least start awakened opened his eyes gave me a long steady look turning his face very slightly to gaze easier one long clear silent look a slight sigh then turned back and went into his doze again little he knew poor death-stricken boy the heart of the stranger that hovered near the western star venus in the earlier hours of evening has never been so large so clear it seems as if it told something as if it held rapport indulgent with humanity with us americans the sky dark blue the transparent night the planets the moderate west wind the elastic temperature the miracle of that great star and the young and swelling moon swimming in the west suffused the soul then i heard slow and clear the deliberate notes of a bugle come up out of the silence firm and faithful floating along rising falling leisurely with here and there a long-drawn note sounding tattoo a steady rain dark and thick and warm he writes again two days after gettysburg the cavalry camp is a ceaseless field of observation to me this forenoon there stood the horses tethered together dripping steaming chewing their hay the men emerge from their tents dripping also the fires are half quenched there is a poetic poise in this brief vivid statement apart from its bare economy of means it is the lump awaiting the leaven no less than is cavalry crossing a ford to this supreme spectator an apple orchard in may even the white house in moonlight no more and no less than these battle scenes rendered up their dignity life and beauty their true human significance but in drum taps the witness is not always so satisfactory the secret has evaporated in the effort to make poetry or half consciously to inject a moral to play the universal bard there creeps into the words a tinge of the raw and the grotesque the poet has the look of a cowboy off the stage tanned with grease paint but again and again the secret creeps back and some lovely emanation of poetry is added to it look down fair moon and bathe this scene pour softly down night's nimbus floods on faces ghastly swollen purple on the dead on their backs with arms tossed wide pour down your unstinted nimbus sacred moon or this called reconciliation word over all beautiful as the sky beautiful that war and all its deeds of carnage must in time be utterly lost that the hands of the sisters death and night incessantly softly wash again and ever again this soiled world for my enemy is dead a man divine as myself is dead i look where he lies white-faced and still in the coffin i draw near bend down and touch lightly with my lips the white face in the coffin the bonds of rhyme shackled him deprived him of more than freedom he is like a wild bird that suddenly perceives the bars of its small cage across the blue of the sky and yet the finer his poems are the nearer they approach to definite rhythmical design one has only to compare o captain my captain with hushed be the camps to-day to perceive this curious paradox they are both of them memories of his beloved lincoln whom he had many times seen with that peculiarly close and transatlantic curiosity of his riding at a jog-trot on a good-sized easy-going grey horse with his escort of yellow-striped cavalry behind him through the streets of washington dressed in black somewhat rusty and dusty with a black stiff hat 
almost as ordinary in attire as the commonest man. That heroic face, too, he had pierced, and caught from it the deep, subtle, indirect expression that only the long-gone master painters of the old world could have seized and immortalized. And in yet another memory of this great American, Whitman attains to his best and highest, when lilacs last in the doorway bloomed. It is one of the most beautiful of poems, of the purest intuition, of a consummate, if unconscious, artistry. Whose voice is it that rings and echoes, now low and tender, now solemn and desolate, now clear, full, victorious, out of its cloistral solitude, that of the mourner himself, of all heedful, heedless nature, of the immortal soul of man, or just a bird, the shy and hidden, sweet, small hermit thrush? The last division of his life's work, his fond epic, his cosmic inventory, as Whitman planned it, was to be devoted to the chaunting of songs of death and immortality. The soldier to whom he read of Christ's resurrection talked of death to him, and said he did not fear it. He talked to a man who did not enjoy religion in the way a Christian means, to whom the mystery of Easter is an all-sufficing reliance. But Whitman not only did not fear death, the thought of it was to him the strangest of raptures, the reverie of a child dreaming of a distant mother soon to come again. Death and immortality were but two aspects of the same blessed hope to this man, who poured out his life in a turgid fount of ecstatic joy in living. And I saw as scant the armies, I saw as in noiseless dreams hundreds of battle flags, borne through the smoke of the battles and pierced with missiles I saw them, and carried hither and yon through the smoke and torn and bloody, and at last but a few shreds left on the staffs, and all in silence and the staffs all splintered and broken. I saw battle corpses, myriads of them, and the white skeletons of young men, I saw them. I saw the debris and debris of all the slain soldiers of the war, but I saw they were not as was thought. They themselves were fully at rest, they suffered not. The living remained and suffered, the mother suffered, and the wives and the child and the musing comrades suffered, and the armies that remained suffered. Come lovely and soothing death undulate round the world serenely arriving arriving in the night in the day to all to each sooner or later delicate death praised be the fathomless universe for life and joy and for objects and knowledge curious and for love sweet love but praise 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 for the sure and winding arms of cool enfolding death dark mother always gliding near with soft feet have none chanted for thee a chant of fullest welcome then I chant it for thee, I glorify thee above all, I bring thee a song that when thou must indeed come, come unfalteringly. End of Introduction Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine Poem Section 1 of Drum Taps by Walt Whitman This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Poems, Section 1. First, O Songs for a Prelude. First, O Songs for a Prelude. Lightly strike on the stretched tympanum pride and joy in my city. How she led the rest to arms, how she gave the cue. How at once with lithe limbs unwaiting a moment she sprang. O superb, O Manhattan, my own, my peerless. O strongest you in the hour of danger in crisis, O truer than steel, how you sprang, how you threw off the costumes of peace with indifferent hand, how your soft opera music changed and the drum and fife were heard in their stead, how you led to the war that shall serve for our prelude songs of soldiers, how Manhattan drum taps led. Forty years had I in my city seen soldiers parading, forty years as a pageant still unawares the lady of this teeming and turbulent city sleepless amid her ships her houses her incalculable wealth with her million children around her suddenly at dead of night at news from the south incensed struck with clinched hand the pavement a shock electric the night sustained it till with ominous hum our hive at daybreak poured out its myriads from the houses then and the workshops and through all the doorways leapt they tumultuous and low Manhattan arming. To the drum taps prompt, the young men falling in and arming, 
the mechanics arming the trowel the jack plane the blacksmith's hammer tossed aside with precipitation the lawyer leaving his office and arming the judge leaving the court the driver deserting his wagon in the street jumping down throwing the reins abruptly down on the horses backs the salesman leaving the store the boss bookkeeper porter all leaving squads gather everywhere by common consent and arm the new recruits even boys the old men show them how to wear their accoutrements they buckle the straps carefully outdoors arming indoors arming the flash of the musket barrels the white tents cluster in camps the armed sentries around the sunrise cannon and again at sunset armed regiments arrive every day pass through the city and embark from the wharves how good they look as they tramp down to the river sweaty with their guns on their shoulders how i love them how i could hug them with their brown faces and their clothes and knapsacks covered with dust the blood of the city up armed armed the cry everywhere the flags flung out from the steeples of churches and from all the public buildings and stores the tearful parting the mother kisses her son the son kisses his mother loath is the mother to part yet not a word does she speak to detain him the tumultuous escort the ranks of policemen preceding clearing the way the unpent enthusiasm the wild cheers of the crowd for their favorites the artillery the silent cannons bright as gold drawn along rumble lightly over the stones silent cannons soon to cease your silence soon unlimbered to begin the red business all the mutter of preparation all the determined arming the hospital service the lint bandages and medicines the women volunteering for nurses the work begun for in earnest no mere parade now war an armed race is advancing the welcome for battle no turning away war be it weeks months or years an armed race is advancing to welcome it manna had a, a march and it's oh to sing it well it's oh for a manly life in the camp and the sturdy artillery the guns bright as gold the work for giants to serve well the guns unlimber them no more as the past forty years for salutes for courtesies merely put in something now besides powder and wadding and you lady of ships you manahatta old matron of this proud friendly turbulent city often in peace and wealth you were pensive or covertly frowned amid all your children but now you smile with joy exulting old manahatta eighteen sixty one armed year year of the struggle no dainty rhymes or sentimental love verses for you terrible year not you as some pale poetling seated at a desk lisping cadenza's piano but as a strong man erect clothed in blue clothes advancing carrying a rifle on your shoulder with well gristled body and sunburnt face and hands with a knife in the belt at your side as i heard you shouting loud your sonorous voice ringing across the continent your masculine voice o oh year as rising amid the great cities amid the men of manhattan i saw you as one of the workmen the dwellers in manhattan or with large steps crossing the prairies out of illinois and indiana rapidly crossing the west with springy gait and descending the alleghanies or down from the great lakes or in pennsylvania or on deck along the ohio river or southward along the tennessee or cumberland rivers or at chattanooga on the mountain top saw i your gait and saw i your sinewy limbs clothed in blue bearing weapons robust year heard your determined voice launched forth again and again year that suddenly sang by the mouths of the round-lipped cannon i repeat you hurrying crashing sad distracted year beat beat drums beat beat drums blow bugles blow through the windows through doors burst like a ruthless force into the solemn church and scatter the congregation into the school where the scholar is studying leave not the bridegroom quiet no happiness must he have now with his bride nor the peaceful farmer any peace ploughing his field or gathering his grain so fierce you were and pound you drums so shrill you bugles blow beat beat drums blow bugles blow over the traffic of cities over the rumble of wheels in the streets are beds prepared for sleepers at night in the houses no sleepers must sleep in those beds no bargainers bargains by day no brokers or speculators would they continue would the talkers be talking 
would the singer attempt to sing would the lawyer rise in the court to state his case before the judge then rattle quicker heavier drums you bugles wilder blow beat beat drum blow bugles blow make no parley stop for no expostulation mind not the timid mind not the weeper or prayer mind not the old man beseeching the young man let not the child's voice be heard nor the mother's entreaties make even the trestles to shake the dead where they lie awaiting the hearses so strong you thump o oh, terrible drums so loud you bugles blow from palmenach starting i fly like a bird from palmenach starting i fly like a bird around and around to soar to sing the idea of all to the north betaking myself to sing their arctic songs to canada till i absorb canada in myself to michigan then to wisconsin iowa minnesota to sing their songs they are inimitable then to ohio and indiana to sing theirs to missouri and kansas and arkansas to sing theirs to tennessee and kentucky to the carolinas and georgia to sing theirs to texas and so along up toward california to rome accepted everywhere to sing first to the tap of the war drum if need be the idea of all of the western world one and inseparable and then the song of each member of these states song of the banner at daybreak poet oh a new song a free song flapping 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 by sounds by voices clearer by the wind's voice and that of the drum by the banner's voice and child's voice and sea's voice and father's voice low on the ground and high in the air on the ground where father and child stand in the upward air where their eyes turn where the banner at daybreak is flapping words book words what are you words no more for hearken and see my song is there in the open air and i must sing with the banner and pennant a flapping i'll weave the cord and twine in man's desire and babe's desire i'll twine them in i'll put in life i'll put the bayonet's flashing point i'll let bullets and slugs whiz as one carrying a symbol and menace far into the future crying with trumpet voice arouse and beware beware and arouse i'll pour the verse with streams of blood full of volition full of joy then loosen launch forth to go and compete with the banner and pennant a flapping pennant come up here bard bard come up here soul soul come up here dear little child to fly in the clouds and winds with me and play with the measureless light child father what is that in the sky beckoning to me with long finger and what does it say to me all the while father nothing my babe you see in the sky and nothing at all to you it says but look you my babe look at these dazzling things in the houses and see you the money shops opening and see you the vehicles preparing to crawl along the streets with goods these ah these how valued and toiled for these how envied by all the earth poet fresh and rosy red the sun is mounting high on floats the sea in distant blue careering through its channels on floats the wind over the breast of the sea setting in toward land the great steady wind from west or west by south floating so buoyant with milk-white foam on the waters but i am not the sea nor the red sun i am not the wind with girlish laughter not the immense wind which strengthens not the wind which lashes not the spirit that ever lashes its own body to terror and death but i am that which unseen comes and sings 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 which babbles in brooks and scoots in showers on the land which the birds know in the woods mornings and evenings and the shore sands know in the hissing wave and that banner and pennant aloft there flapping and flapping child o oh, father it is alive it is full of people it has children oh now it seems to me it is talking to its children i hear it it talks to me oh it is wonderful oh it stretches it spreads and runs so fast oh my father it is so broad it covers the whole sky father cease cease my foolish babe what you are saying is sorrowful to me much it displeases me behold with the rest again i say behold not banners and pennants aloft but the well-prepared pavements behold and mark the solid walled houses banner and pennant speak to the child o bard out of manhattan 
to our children all, or north or south of Manhattan, point this day, leaving all the rest, to us over all, and yet we know not why. For what are we, mere strips of cloth profiting nothing, only flapping in the wind? Poet. I hear and see not strips of cloth alone. I hear the tramp of armies. I hear the challenging sentry. I hear the jubilant shouts of millions of men. I hear liberty. I hear the drums beat and the trumpets blowing. I myself move abroad, swift rising, flying then. I use the wings of the land bird and use the wings of the sea bird and look down as from a height. I do not deny the precious results of peace. I see populous cities with wealth incalculable. I see numberless farms. I see the farmers working in their fields or barns. I see mechanics working. I see buildings everywhere founded, going up or finished. I see trains of cars swiftly speeding along railroad tracks, drawn by the locomotives. I see the stores, depots of Boston, Baltimore, Charleston, New Orleans. I see far in the west the immense area of grain. I dwell a while, hovering. I pass to the lumber forests of the north, and again to the southern plantation, and again to California. Sweeping the whole, I see the countless profit, the busy gatherings, earned wages, see the identity formed out of thirty-eight spacious and haughty states, and many more to come, see forts on the shores of harbors, see ships sailing in and out, then over all, I, I, my little and lengthened pennant, shaped like a sword, run swiftly up, indicating war and defiance, and now the halyards have raised it, side of my banner, broad and blue, side of my starry banner, discarding peace over all the sea and land banner and pennant yet louder higher stronger bard yet farther wider cleave no longer let our children deem us riches and peace alone we may be terror and carnage and are so now not now are we any one of these spacious and haughty states nor any five nor ten nor market nor depot we nor money bank in the city but these and all in the brown and spreading land and the mines below are ours and the shores of the sea are ours, and the rivers great and small, and the fields they moisten, and the crops and the fruits are ours. Bays and channels and ships sailing in and out are ours, while we over all, over the area spread below, the three or four millions of square miles, the capitals, the forty millions of people, O oh bard, in life and death supreme. We, even we, henceforth flaunt out masterful, high up above, not for the present alone, for a thousand years chanting through you this song to the soul of one poor little child. Child, O oh my father, I like not the houses. They will never to me be anything, nor do I like money. But to mount up there I would like, O oh father dear, that banner I like, that pennant I would be and must be. Father, child of mine, you fill me with anguish. To be that pennant would be too fearful. Little you know what it is this day and after this day forever. It is to gain nothing but risk and defy everything. Forward to stand in front of wars, and oh, such wars, what have you to do with them? With passions of demons, slaughter, premature death. Banner, demons and death, then I sing. Put in all, I, all will I, sword-shaped pennant for war, and a pleasure new and ecstatic, and the prattled yearning of children blent with the sounds of the peaceful land and the liquid wash of the sea and the black ships fighting on the sea enveloped in smoke and the icy cool of the far far north with rustling cedars and pines and the whir of drums and the sound of soldiers marching and the hot sun shining south and the beach waves combing over the beach on my eastern shore and my western shore the same and all between those shores and my ever-running mississippi with bends and shoots and my illinois fields and my kansas fields and my fields of missouri the continent devoting the whole identity without reserving an atom pour in whelm that which asks which sings with all and the yield of all fusing and holding claiming devouring the whole no more with tender lip nor musical labial sound but out of the night emerging for good our voice persuasive no more croaking like crows here in the wind. Poet, my limbs, my veins dilate, my theme is clear at last. Banner so broad advancing out of the night, I sing you haughty and resolute. I burst through where I waited long, too long, 
deafened and blinded. My hearing and tongue are come to me, a little child taught me. I hear from above, O pennant of war, your ironical call and demand. Insensate, insensate, yet I at any rate chant you, O banner. Not houses of peace indeed are you, nor any nor all their prosperity. If need be, ye shall again have every one of those houses to destroy them. You thought not to destroy those valuable houses, standing fast, full of comfort, built with money? May they stand fast, then? Not an hour except you above them, and all stand fast. O banner, not money so precious are you, not farm produce you, nor the material good nutriment, nor excellent stores, nor landed on wharves from the ships, not the superb ships with sail power or steam power, fetching and carrying cargoes nor machinery, vehicles, trade, nor revenues, but you as henceforth I see you, running up out of the night, bringing your cluster of stars, ever enlarging stars, divider of daybreak you, cutting the air, touched by the sun, measuring the sky, passionately seen and yearned for by one poor little child, while others remain busy or smartly talking, forever teaching thrift, thrift, O oh, you up there, O oh, pennant, where you undulate like a snake hissing so curious, out of reach an idea only yet furiously fought for, risking bloody death loved by me, so loved, O oh, you banner leading the day with stars brought from the night, valueless, object of eyes, over all and demanding all, absolute owner of all, O oh, banner and pennant. I too leave the rest, great as it is, it is nothing, houses, machines are nothing, I see them not, I see but you, O warlike pennant, O banner so broad with stripes, I sing you only, flapping up there in the wind. Rise, O days, from your fathomless deeps. Part 1 Rise, O days, from your fathomless deeps, Till you loftier, fiercer sweep. Long for my soul, hungering gymnastic, I devoured what the earth gave me. Long I roamed the woods of the north, long I watched Niagara pouring. I travelled the prairies over and slept on their breast. I crossed the Nevadas, I crossed the plateaus. I ascended the towering rocks along the Pacific. I sailed out to sea. I sailed through the storm, I was refreshed by the storm. I watched with joy the threatening maws of the waves. I marked the white cones where they careered so high, curling over. I heard the wind piping, I saw the black clouds. Saw from below what arose and mounted, oh, superb, oh, wild as my heart and powerful. Heard the continuous thunder as it bellowed after the lightning. Noted the slender and jagged threads of lightning, as sudden and fast amid the din, they chased each other across the sky. These and such as these I, elate, saw, saw with wonder, yet pensive and masterful. All the menacing might of the globe uprisen around me. Yet there with my soul I fed, I fed content, supercilious. Part 2. T'was well, O soul, t'was a good preparation you gave me. Now we advance our latent and ampler hunger to fill. Now we go forth to receive what the earth and the sea never gave us. Not through the mighty woods we go, but through the mightier cities. Something for us is pouring now more than Niagara pouring. Torrents of men. Sources and rills of the northwest, are you indeed inexhaustible? What, to pavements and homesteads here? What were those storms of the mountains and sea? What, to passions I witness around me today? Was the sea risen? Was the wind piping the pipe of death under the black clouds? Lo, from deeps more unfathomable, something more deadly and savage, Manhattan rising, advancing with menacing front, Cincinnati, Chicago, unchained. What was that swell I saw on the ocean? Behold what comes here, how it climbs with daring feet and hands, how it dashes, how the true thunder bellows after the lightning, how bright the flashes of lightning, how democracy with desperate vengeful port strides on, shone through the dark by those flashes of lightning. Yet a mournful wail and low sob I fancied I heard through the dark in a lull of the deafening confusion. Part 3 thunder on stride on democracy strike with vengeful stroke and do you rise higher than ever yet o days o cities crash heavier heavier yet o storms you have done me good 
my soul prepared in the mountains absorbs your immortal strong nutriment long had i walked my cities my country roads through farms only half satisfied one doubt nauseous undulating like a snake crawled on the ground before me continually preceding my steps turning upon me oft ironically hissing low the cities i loved so well i abandoned and left i sped to the certainties suitable to me hungering 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 for primal energies and nature's dauntlessness i refreshed myself with it only i could relish it only i waited the bursting forth of the pent fire on the water and air i waited long but now i no longer wait i am fully satisfied i am glutted i have witnessed the true lightning i have witnessed my cities electric i have lived to behold man burst forth and warlike america rise hence i will seek no more the food of the northern solitary wilds no more the mountains roam or sail the stormy sea virginia the west the noble sire fallen on evil days i saw with hand uplifted menacing brandishing memories of old in abeyance love and faith in abeyance the insane knife toward the mother of all the noble son on sinewy feet advancing i saw out of the land of prairies land of ohio's waters and of indiana to the rescue the stalwart giant hurry his plenteous offspring dressed in blue bearing their trusty rifles on their shoulders then the mother of all with calm voice speaking as to you rebellious i seem to hear her say why strive against me and why seek my life when you yourself forever provide to defend me for you provided me washington and now these also city of ships city of ships oh the black ships oh the fierce ships oh the beautiful sharp bowed steamships and sail ships city of the world for all races are here all the lands of the earth make contributions here city of the sea city of hurried and glittering tides city whose gleeful tides continually rush or recede whirling in and out with eddies and foam city of wharves and stores city of tall facades of marble and iron proud and passionate city meddlesome mad extravagant city spring up o city not for peace alone but be indeed yourself warlike fear not submit to no models but your own o city behold me incarnate me as i have incarnated you i have rejected nothing you offered me whom you adopted i have adopted good or bad i never question you i love all i do not condemn anything i chant and celebrate all that is yours yet peace no more in peace i chanted peace but now the drum of war is mine war red war is my song through your streets o city end of poem section one recording by expatriate in bangor maine Poems section two of Drum Taps by Walt Whitman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Poems section two. The Centenarian Story. Volunteer of eighteen sixty one and two at Washington Park, Brooklyn, assisting the centenarian. Give me your hand, old revolutionary. The hilltop is nigh but a few steps. Make room, gentlemen. Up the path you have followed me well, spite of your hundred and extra years. You can walk, old man, though your eyes are almost done. Your faculties serve you, and presently I must have them serve me. Rest while I tell what the crowd around us means. On the plain below, recruits are drilling and exercising. There is the camp. One regiment departs tomorrow. Do you hear the officers giving their orders? Do you hear the clank of the muskets? Why, what comes over you now, old man? Why do you tremble and clutch my hand so convulsively? The troops are but drilling, they are yet surrounded with smiles. Around them at hand the well-dressed friends and the women, while splendid and warm the afternoon sun shines down. Green the midsummer verdure and fresh blows the dallying breeze, or proud and peaceful cities and arm of the sea between. But drill and parade are over, they march back to quarters only hear that approval of hands hear what a clapping 
as wending the crowds now part and disperse but we old man not for nothing have i brought you hither we must remain you to speak in your turn and i to listen and tell the centenarian when i clutched your hand it was not with terror but suddenly pouring about me here on every side and below there where the boys were drilling and up the slopes they ran and where tents are pitched and wherever you see south and southeast and southwest over hills across lowlands and in the skirts of woods and along the shores in mire now filled over came again and suddenly raged as eighty-five years agone no mere parade received with applause of friends but a battle which i took part in myself i long ago as it is i took part in it walking then this hilltop this same ground i this is the ground my blind eyes even as i speak behold it repeopled from graves the years recede pavements and stately houses disappear rude forts appear again the old hooped guns are mounted i see the lines of raised earth stretching from river to bay i mark the vista of waters i mark the uplands and slopes here we lay encamped it was this time in summer also as i talk i remember all i remember the declaration it was read here the whole army paraded it was read to us here by his staff surrounded the general stood in the middle he held up his unsheathed sword it glittered in the sun in full sight of the army twas a bold act then the english warships had just arrived we could watch down the lower bay where they lay at anchor and the transports swarming with soldiers a few days more and they landed and then the battle twenty thousand were brought against us a veteran force furnished with good artillery i tell not now the whole of the battle but one brigade early in the forenoon ordered forward to engage the redcoats of that brigade i tell and how steadily it marched and how long and well it stood confronting death who do you think that was marching steadily sternly confronting death it was the brigade of the youngest men two thousand strong raised in virginia and maryland and most of them known personally to the general jauntily forward they went with quick step toward gowanus's waters till of a sudden unlooked for by defiles through the woods gained at night the british advancing rounding in from the east fiercely playing their guns that brigade of the youngest was cut off and at the enemy's mercy the general watched them from this hill they made repeated desperate attempts to burst their environment they drew close together very compact their flag flying in the middle but oh from the hills how the cannon were thinning and thinning them it sickens me yet that slaughter i saw the moisture gather in drops on the face of the general i saw how he wrung his hands in anguish meanwhile the british manoeuvred to draw us out for a pitched battle but we dared not trust the chances of a pitched battle we fought the fight in detachments sallying forth we fought at several points but in each the luck was against us our foe advancing steadily getting the best of it pushed us back to the works on this hill till we turned menacing here and then he left us that was the going out of the brigade of the youngest men two thousand strong few returned nearly all remain in brooklyn that and here my general's first battle no women looking on nor sunshine to bask in it did not conclude with applause nobody clapped hands here then but in darkness in mist on the ground under a chill rain wearied that night we lay foiled and sullen while scornfully laughed many an arrogant lord oft against us encamped quite within hearing feasting clinking wine glasses together over their victory so dull and damp in another day but the night of that mist lifting rain ceasing silent as a ghost while they thought they were sure of him my general retreated i saw him at the riverside down by the ferry lit by torches hastening the embarkation my general waited till the soldiers and wounded were all passed over and then it was just ere sunrise these eyes rested on him for the last time every one else seemed filled with gloom many no doubt thought of capitulation but when my general passed me as he stood in his boat and looked toward the coming sun i saw something different from capitulation terminus enough the centenarian's story ends the two the past and present have interchanged i myself as connector as chansonnier of a great future am now speaking and is this the ground washington trod 
and these waters i listlessly daily cross are these the waters he crossed as resolute in defeat as other generals in their proudest triumphs i must copy the story and send it eastward and westward i must preserve that look as it beamed on you rivers of brooklyn see as the annual round returns the phantoms return it is the twenty seventh of august and the british have landed the battle begins and goes against us behold through the smoke washington's face the brigade of virginia and maryland have marched forth to intercept the enemy they are cut off murderous artillery from the hills plays upon them rank after rank falls while over them silently droops the flag baptized that day in many a young man's bloody wounds in death defeat and sisters mother's tears ah hills and slopes of brooklyn i perceive you are more valuable than your owners supposed in the midst of you stands an encampment very old stands forever the camp of that dead brigade cavalry crossing a ford a line in long array where they wind betwixt green islands they take a serpentine course their arms flash in the sun hark to the musical clank behold the silvery river in it the splashing horses loitering stop to drink behold the brown-faced men each group each person a picture the negligent rest on the saddles some emerge on the opposite bank others are just entering the ford while scarlet and blue and snowy white the guidon flags flutter gaily in the wind bivouac on a mountain side i see before me now a travelling army halting below a fertile valley spread with barns in the orchards of summer behind the terraced sides of a mountain abrupt in places rising high broken with rocks with clinging cedars with tall shapes dingily seen the numerous campfires scattered near and far some away up on the mountain the shadowy forms of men and horses looming large-sized flickering and over all the sky the sky far far out of reach studded breaking out the eternal stars an army corps on the march with its cloud of skirmishers in advance with now the sound of a single shot snapping like a whip and now an irregular volley the swarming ranks press on and on the dense brigades press on glittering dimly toiling under the sun the dust-covered men in columns rise and fall to the undulations of the ground with artillery interspersed the wheels rumble the horses sweat as the army corps advances by the bivouac's fitful flame by the bivouac's fitful flame a procession winding around me solemn and sweet and slow but first i note the tents of the sleeping army the fields and woods dim outline the darkness lit by spots of kindled fire the silence like a phantom far or near an occasional figure moving the shrubs and trees as i lift my eyes they seem to be stealthily watching me while wind in procession thoughts o oh, tender and wondrous thoughts of life and death of home and the past and love and of those that are far away a solemn and slow procession there as i sit on the ground by the bivouac's fitful flame come up from the fields father come up from the fields father here's a letter from our pete and come to the front door mother here's a letter from thy dear son lo tis autumn lo where the trees deeper green yellower and redder cool and sweeten ohio's villages with leaves fluttering in the moderate wind where apples ripe in the orchards hang and grapes on the trellised vines smell you the smell of the grapes on the vines smell you the buckwheat where the bees were lately buzzing above all lo the sky so calm so transparent after the rain and with wondrous clouds below too all calm all vital and beautiful and the farm prospers well down in the fields all prospers well but now from the fields come father come at the daughter's call and come to the entry mother to the front door come right away fast as she can she hurries something ominous her steps trembling she does not tarry to smooth her hair nor adjust her cap open the envelope quickly oh this is not our son's writing yet his name is signed oh a strange hand writes for our dear son oh stricken mother's soul all swims before her eyes flashes with black she catches the main words only sentences broken gunshot wound in the breast cavalry skirmish taken to hospital 
at present low but will soon be better ah now the single figure to me amid all teeming and wealthy ohio with all its cities and farms sickly white in the face and dull in the head very faint by the jamb of a door leans grieve not so dear mother the just-grown daughter speaks through her sobs the little sisters huddle around speechless and dismayed see dearest mother the letter says pete will soon be better alas poor boy he will never be better nor maybe needs to be better that brave and simple soul while they stand at home at the door he is dead already the only son is dead but the mother needs to be better she with thin form presently dressed in black by day her meals untouched then at night fitfully sleeping often waking in the midnight waking weeping longing with one deep longing oh that she might withdraw unnoticed silent from life escape and withdraw to follow to seek to be with her dear dead son vigil strange i kept on the field one night vigil strange i kept on the field one night when you my son and my comrade dropped at my side that day one look i but gave which your dear eyes returned with a look i shall never forget one touch of your hand to mine o oh boy reached up as you lay on the ground then onward i sped in the battle the even contested battle till late in the night relieved to the place at last again i made my way found you in death so cold dear comrade found your body son of responding kisses never again on earth responding bared your face in the starlight curious the scene cool blue the moderate night wind long there and then in vigil i stood dimly around me the battlefield spreading vigil wondrous and vigil sweet there in the fragrant silent night but not a tear fell not even a long-drawn sigh long long i gazed then on the earth partially reclining sat by your side leaning my chin in my hands passing sweet hours immortal and mystic hours with you dearest comrade not a tear not a word vigil of silence love and death vigil for you my son and my soldier as onward silently stars aloft eastward new ones upward stole vigil final for you brave boy i could not save you swift was your death i faithfully loved you and cared for you living i think we shall surely meet again till at latest lingering of the night indeed just as the dawn appeared my comrade i wrapped in his blanket enveloped well his form folded the blanket well tucking it carefully overhead and carefully under feet and there and then and bathed by the rising sun my son in his grave in his rude dug grave i deposited ending my vigil strange with that vigil of night and battlefield dim vigil for boy of responding kisses never again on earth responding vigil for comrades swiftly slain vigil i never forget how as day brightened i rose from the chill ground and folded my soldier well in his blanket and buried him where he fell a march in the ranks hard pressed and the road unknown a march in the ranks hard pressed and the road unknown a route through a heavy wood with muffled steps in the darkness our army foiled with loss severe and the sullen remnant retreating till after midnight glimmer upon us the lights of a dim lighted building we come to an open space in the woods and halt by the dim-lighted building to the large old church at the crossing roads now an impromptu hospital entering but for a minute i see a sight beyond all the pictures and poems ever made shadows of deepest deepest black just lit by moving candles and lamps and by one great pitchy torch stationary with wild red flame and clouds of smoke by these crowds groups of forms vaguely i see on the floor some in the pews laid down at my feet more distinctly a soldier a mere lad in danger of bleeding to death he is shot in the abdomen i staunch the blood temporarily the youngster's face is white as a lily then before i depart i sweep my eyes o'er the scene fain to absorb it all faces varieties postures beyond description most in obscurity some of them dead surgeons operating attendants holding lights the smell of ether the odour of blood the crowd oh the crowd of the bloody forms the yard outside also filled some on the bare ground some on planks or stretchers some in the death spasm sweating an occasional scream or cry the doctors shouted orders or calls 
the glisten of the little steel instruments catching the glint of the torches these i resume as i chant i see again the forms i smell the odor then here outside the orders given fall in my men fall in but first i bend to the dying lad his eyes open a half smile gives he me then the eyes close calmly close and i speed forth to the darkness resuming marching ever in darkness marching on in the ranks the unknown road still marching a sight in camp in the daybreak gray and dim a sight in camp in the daybreak gray and dim as from my tent i emerge so early sleepless as slow i walk in the cool fresh air the path near by the hospital tent three forms i see on stretchers lying brought out there untended lying over each the blanket spread ample brownish woolen blanket gray and heavy blanket folding covering all curious i halt and silent stand then with light fingers i from the face of the nearest the first just lift the blanket who are you elderly man so gaunt and grim with well grayed hair and flesh all sunken about the eyes who are you my dear comrade then to the second i step and who are you my child and darling who are you sweet boy with cheeks yet blooming then to the third a face nor child nor old very calm as a beautiful yellow white ivory young man i think i know you i think this face is the face of the christ himself dead and divine and brother of all and here again he lies as toilsome i wandered virginia's woods as toilsome i wandered virginia's woods to the music of rustling leaves kicked by my feet for twas autumn i marked at the foot of a tree the grave of a soldier mortally wounded he and buried on the retreat easily all could i understand the halt of a midday hour went up no time to lose yet this sign left on a tablet scrolled and nailed on the tree by the grave bold cautious true and my loving comrade long long i muse then on my way go wandering many a changeful season to follow and many a scene of life yet at times through changeful season and scene abrupt alone or in the crowded street comes before me the unknown soldier's grave comes the inscription rude in virginia's woods bold cautious true and my loving comrade not the pilot not the pilot has charged himself to bring his ship into port though beaten back and many times baffled not the pathfinder penetrating inland weary and long by deserts parched snows chilled rivers wet perseveres till he reaches his destination more than i have charged myself heated or unheeded to compose a march for these states for a battle call rousing to arms if need be years centuries hence year that trembled and reeled beneath me year that trembled and reeled beneath me your summer wind was warm enough yet the air i breathed froze me a thick gloom fell through the sunshine and darkened me must i change my triumphant song said i to myself must i indeed learn to chant the cold dirges of the baffled and sullen hymns of defeat the wound dresser part one an old man bending i come among new faces years looking backward resuming an answer to children come tell us old man as from young men and maidens that love me aroused and angry i'd thought to beat the alarum and urge relentless war but soon my fingers failed me my face drooped and i resigned myself to sit by the wounded and soothe them or silently watch the dead years hence of these scenes of these furious passions these chances of unsurpassed heroes was one side so brave the other was equally brave now be witness again paint the mightiest armies of earth of those armies so rapid so wondrous what saw you to tell us what stays with you latest and deepest of curious panics of hard-fought engagements or sieges tremendous what deepest remains part two o oh, maidens and young men i love and that love me what you ask of my days those the strangest and sudden your talking recalls soldier alert i arrive after a long march covered with sweat and dust in the nick of time i come plunge in the fight loudly shout in the rush of successful charge 
enter the captured work yet lo like a swift running river they fade pass and are gone they fade i dwell not on soldiers perils or soldiers joys both i remember well many the hardships few the joys yet i was content but in silence and dreams projections while the world of gain and appearance and mirth goes on so soon what is over forgotten and waves wash the imprints off the sand with hinged knees returning i enter the doors while for you up there whoever you are follow without noise and be of strong heart bearing the bandages water and sponge straight and swift to my wounded i go where they lie on the ground after the battle brought in where their priceless blood reddens the grass the ground or to the rows of the hospital tent or under the roofed hospital to the long rows of cots up and down each side i return to each and all one after another i draw near not one do i miss an attendant follows holding a tray he carries a refuse pail soon to be filled with clotted rags and blood emptied and filled again i onward go i stop with hinged knees and steady hand to dress wounds i am firm with each the pangs are sharp yet unavoidable one turns to me his appealing eyes poor boy i never knew you yet i think i could not refuse this moment to die for you if that would save you part three on on i go open doors of time open hospital doors the crushed head i dress poor crazed hand tear not the bandage away the neck of the cavalry man with the bullet through and through i examine hard the breathing rattles quite glazed already the eye yet life struggles hard come sweet death be persuaded o beautiful death in mercy come quickly from the stump of the arm the amputated hand i undo the clotted lint remove the slough wash off the matter and blood back on his pillow the soldier bends with curved neck and side falling head his eyes are closed his face is pale he dares not look on the bloody stump and has not yet looked on it i dress a wound in the side deep deep but a day or two more for see the frame all wasted and sinking and the yellow-blue countenance see i dress the perforated shoulder the foot with a bullet wound cleanse the one with a gnawing and putrid gangrene so sickening so offensive while the attendant stands behind aside me holding the tray and pail i am faithful i do not give out the fractured thigh the knee the wound in the abdomen these and more i dress with impassive hand yet deep in my breast a fire a burning flame part four thus in silence in dreams projections returning resuming i thread my way through the hospitals the hurt and wounded i pacify with soothing hand i sit by the restless all the dark night some are so young some suffer so much i recall the experience sweet and sad many a soldier's loving arms about this neck have crossed and rested many a soldier's kiss dwells on these bearded lips end of poems section two recording by expatriate in bangor maine Poems, Section 3 of Drum Taps by Walt Whitman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Poems, Section 3. Long, too long, America. Long, too long, America. Traveling roads all even and peaceful you learn from joys and prosperity only. But now, ah, now, to learn from crises of anguish advancing grappling with direst fate and recoiling not and now to conceive and show to the world what your children en masse really are for who except myself has yet conceived what your children en masse really are give me the splendid silent sun part one give me the splendid silent sun with all his beams full dazzling give me juicy autumnal fruit ripe and red from the orchard give me a field where the unmowed grass grows give me an arbor give me the trellised grape give me fresh corn and wheat give me serene moving animals teaching content give me nights perfectly quiet as on high plateaus west of the mississippi and i looking up at the stars give me odorous at sunrise a garden of beautiful flowers where i can walk undisturbed 
Give me for marriage a sweet breathed woman of whom I should never tire. Give me a perfect child. Give me a way aside from the noise of the world, a rural domestic life. Give me to warble spontaneous songs, recluse by myself, for my own ears only. Give me solitude, give me nature. Give me again, O nature, your primal sanities. These demanding to have them, tired with ceaseless excitement and racked by the war strife. These to procure incessantly asking, rising in cries from my heart. While yet incessantly asking, still I adhere to my city. Day upon day and year upon year, O city, walking your streets, where you hold me enchained a certain time, refusing to give me up, yet giving to make me glutted, enriched of soul, you give me forever faces. Oh, I see what I sought to escape, confronting, reversing my cries. I see my own soul trampling down what it asked for. Part 2 Keep your splendid, silent sun. Keep your woods, O nature and the quiet places by the woods. Keep your fields of clover and timothy, and your cornfields and orchards. Keep the blossoming buckwheat fields where the ninth month bees hum. Give me faces and streets. Give me those phantoms incessant and endless along the trottoirs. Give me interminable eyes. Give me women. Give me comrades and lovers by the thousand. Let me see new ones every day. Let me hold new ones by the hand every day. Give me such shows, give me the streets of Manhattan. Give me Broadway with the soldiers marching. Give me the sound of the trumpets and drums. The soldiers in companies or regiments, some starting away, flushed and reckless, some their time up, returning with thin ranks, young yet very old, worn, marching, noticing nothing. Give me the shores and wharves heavy fringed with black ships. Oh, such for me. Oh, an intense life, full to repletion and varied. The life of the theatre, bar-room, huge hotel for me. The saloon of the steamer, the crowded excursion for me. The torchlight procession. The dense brigade bound for the war, with high-piled military wagons following. People endless, streaming with strong voices, passions, pageants. Manhattan streets with their powerful throbs, with beating drums as now the endless and noisy chorus, the rustle and clank of muskets, even the sight of the wounded, Manhattan crowds with their turbulent musical chorus, Manhattan faces and eyes forever for me. Dirge for Two Veterans The last sunbeam lightly falls from the finished Sabbath, on the pavement here and there beyond it is looking, down a new-made double grave. Lo, the moon ascending, up from the east the silvery round moon, beautiful over the housetops, ghastly phantom moon, immense and silent moon. I see a sad procession, and I hear the sound of coming full-keyed bugles, all the channels of the city streets they're flooding, as with voices and with tears. I hear the great drums pounding, and the small drums steady whirring, and every blow of the great convulsive drums strikes me through and through. For the son is brought with the father, in the foremost ranks of the fierce assault they fell. Two veterans, son and father, drop together, and the double grave awaits them. Now nearer blow the bugles, and the drums strike more convulsive, and the daylight o'er the pavement quite has faded, and the strong dead march enwraps me. In the eastern sky up buoying, the sorrowful, vast phantom moves illumined. Tis some mother's large transparent face, in heaven brighter growing. O oh, strong dead march, you please me. O oh, moon immense, with your silvery face you soothe me. O oh, my soldiers twain, O oh, my veterans passing to burial, what I have I also give you. The moon gives you light, and the bugles and the drums give you music. And my heart, O oh, my soldiers, my veterans, my heart gives you love. Over the carnage rose prophetic a voice. Over the carnage rose prophetic a voice. Be not disheartened, affections shall solve the problems of freedom yet. Those who love each other shall become invincible. They shall yet make Columbia victorious. Sons of the mother of all, you shall yet be victorious. You shall yet laugh to scorn the attacks of all the remainder of the earth. No danger shall balk Columbia's lovers. 
if need be a thousand shall sternly immolate themselves for one one from massachusetts shall be a missourian's comrade from maine and from hot carolina and another an oregonese shall be friends triune more precious to each other than all the riches of the earth to michigan florida perfumes shall tenderly come not the perfumes of flowers but sweeter and wafted beyond death it shall be customary in the houses and streets to see manly affection the most dauntless and rude shall touch face to face lightly the dependence of liberty shall be lovers the continuance of equality shall be comrades these shall tie you and band you stronger than hoops of iron i ecstatic o partners o lands with the love of lovers tie you were you looking to be held together by lawyers or by an agreement on a paper or by arms nay nor the world nor any living thing will so cohere i saw old general at bay i saw old general at bay old as he was his gray eyes yet shone out in battle like stars his small force was now completely hemmed in in his works he called for volunteers to run the enemy's lines a desperate emergency i saw a hundred and more step forth from the ranks but two or three were selected i saw them receive their orders aside they listened with care the adjutant was very grave i saw them depart with cheerfulness freely risking their lives the artilleryman's vision while my wife at my side lies slumbering and the wars are over long and my head on the pillow rests at home and the vacant midnight passes and through the stillness through the dark i hear just hear the breath of my infant there in the room as i wake from sleep this vision presses upon me the engagement opens there and then in fantasy unreal the skirmishers begin they crawl cautiously ahead i hear the irregular snap snap i hear the sounds of the different missiles the short th th of the rifle balls i see the shells exploding leaving small white clouds i hear the great shells shrieking as they pass the grape like the hum and whir of wind through the trees tumultuous now the contest rages all the scenes at the batteries rise in detail before me again the crashing and smoking the pride of the men in their pieces the chief gunner ranges and sights his piece and selects a fuse of the right time after firing i see him lean aside and look eagerly off to note the effect elsewhere i hear the cry of a regiment charging the young colonel leads himself this time with brandished sword i see the gaps cut by the enemy's volleys quickly filled up no delay i breathe the suffocating smoke then the flat clouds hover low concealing all now a strange lull for a few seconds not a shot fired on either side then resume the chaos louder than ever with eager calls and orders of officers while from some distant part of the field the wind wafts to my ears a shout of applause some special success and ever the sound of the cannon far or near rousing even in dreams a devilish exultation and all the old mad joy in the depths of my soul and ever the hastening of infantry shifting positions batteries cavalry moving hither and thither the falling dying i heed not the wounded dripping in red i heed not some to the rear are hobbling grime heat rush aide-de-camps galloping by or on a full run with the patter of small arms the warming st of the rifles these in my vision i hear or see and bombs bursting in air and at night the very colored rockets ethiopia saluting the colors who are you dusky woman so ancient hardly human with your woolly white and turbaned head and bare bony feet why rising by the roadside here do you the colors greet tis while our army lines carolina's sands and pines forth from thy hovel door thou ethiopia comes to me as under doughty sherman i march toward the sea me master years a hundred since from my parents sundered a little child they caught me as a savage beast is caught then hither me across the sea the cruel slaver brought no further does she say but lingering all the day her high-born turbaned head she wags and rolls her darkling eye and courtesies to the regiments the guidons moving by what is it fateful woman so blear hardly human why wag your head with turban bound yellow red and green 
are the things so strange and marvellous you see or have seen not youth pertains to me not youth pertains to me nor delicatesse i cannot beguile the time with talk awkward in the parlour neither a dancer nor elegant in the learned coterie sitting constrained and still for learning inures not to me beauty knowledge inure not to me yet there are two or three things inure to me i have nourished the wounded and soothed many a dying soldier and at intervals waiting or in the midst of camp compose these songs race of veterans race of veterans race of victors race of the soil ready for conflict race of the conquering march no more credulity's race abiding tempered race race henceforth owning no law but the law of itself race of passion and the storm world take good notice world take good notice silver stars fading milky hue ripped weft of white detaching coals thirty-eight baleful and burning scarlet significant hands-off warning now and henceforth flaunt from these shores o tan-faced prairie boy o tan-faced prairie boy before you came to camp came many a welcome gift praises and presents came and nourishing food till at last among the recruits you came taciturn with nothing to give we but looked on each other when lo more than all the gifts of the world you gave me look down fair moon look down fair moon and bathe this scene pour softly down night's nimbus floods on faces ghastly swollen purple on the dead on their backs with arms tossed wide pour down your unstinted nimbus sacred moon reconciliation word over all beautiful as the sky beautiful that war and all its deeds of carnage must in time be utterly lost that the hands of the sisters death and night incessantly softly wash again and ever again this soiled world for my enemy is dead a man divine as myself is dead i look where he lies white-faced and still in the coffin i draw near bend down and touch lightly with my lips the white face in the coffin how solemn as one by one washington city eighteen sixty five how solemn as one by one as the ranks returning worn and sweaty as the men file by where i stand as the faces the masks appear as i glance at the faces studying the masks as i glance upward out of this page studying you dear friend whoever you are how solemn the thought of my whispering soul to each in the ranks and to you i see behind each mask that wonder a kindred soul oh the bullet could never kill what you really are dear friend nor the bayonet stab what you really are the soul yourself i see great as any good as the best waiting secure and content which the bullet could never kill nor the bayonet stab o oh friend as i lay with my head in your lap camarado as i lay with my head in your lap camarado the confession i made i resume what i said to you and the open air i resume i know i am restless and make others so i know my words are weapons full of danger full of death for i confront peace security and all the settled laws to unsettle them i am more resolute because all have denied me than i could ever have been had all accepted me i heed not and have never heeded either experience cautions majorities nor ridicule and the threat of what is called hell is little or nothing to me and the lure of what is called heaven is little or nothing to me dear camarado i confess i have urged you onward with me and still urge you without the least idea what is our destination or whether we shall be victorious or utterly quelled and defeated delicate cluster delicate cluster flag of teeming life covering all my lands all my seashores lining flag of death how i watched you through the smoke of battle pressing how i heard you flap and rustle cloth defiant flag cerulean sunny flag with the orbs of night dappled ah my silvery beauty ah my woolly white and crimson 
ah to sing the song of you my matron mighty my sacred one my mother to a certain civilian did you ask dulcet rhymes from me did you seek the civilian's peaceful and languishing rhymes did you find what i sang erewhile so hard to follow why i was not singing erewhile for you to follow to understand nor am i now i have been born of the same as the war was born the drum corps rattle is ever to me sweet music i love well the martial dirge with slow wail and convulsive throb leading the officer's funeral what to such as you anyhow such a poet as i therefore leave my works and go lull yourself with what you can understand and with piano tunes for i lull nobody and you will never understand me lo victress on the peaks lo victress on the peaks where thou with mighty brow regarding the world the world o libertad that vainly conspired against thee out of its countless beleaguering toils after thwarting them all dominant with the dazzling sun around thee flauntest now unharmed in immortal soundness and bloom lo in these hours supreme no poem proud i chanting bring to thee nor mastery's rapturous verse but a cluster containing night's darkness and blood dripping wounds and psalms of the dead spirit whose work is done washington city eighteen sixty five spirit whose work is done spirit of dreadful hours ere departing fade from my eyes your forest of bayonets spirit of gloomiest fears and doubts yet onward ever unfaltering pressing spirit of many a solemn day and many a savage scene electric spirit that with muttering voice through the war now closed like a tireless phantom flitted rousing the land with breath of flame while you beat and beat the drum now is the sound of the drum hollow and harsh to the last reverberates round me as your ranks your immortal ranks return return from the battles as the muskets of the young men yet lean over their shoulders as i look on the bayonets bristling over their shoulders as those slanted bayonets whole forests of them appearing in the distance approach and pass on returning homeward moving with steady motion swaying to and fro to the right and left evenly lightly rising and falling while the steps keep time spirit of hours i knew all hectic red one day but pale as death next day touch my mouth ere you depart press my lips close leave me your pulses of rage bequeath them to me fill me with currents convulsive let them scorch and blister out of my chance when you are gone let them identify you to the future in these songs adieu to a soldier adieu o soldier you of the rude campaigning which we shared the rapid march the life of the camp the hot contention of opposing fronts the long manoeuvre bed battles with their slaughter the stimulus the strong terrific game spell of all brave and manly hearts the trains of time through you and like of you all filled with war and war's expression adieu dear comrade your mission is fulfilled but i more warlike myself in this contentious soul of mine still on our own campaigning bound through untried roads with ambushes opponents lined through many a sharp defeat and many a crisis often baffled here marching ever marching on a war fight out i hear to fiercer weightier battles give expression turn o libertad turn o libertad for the war is over from it and all henceforth expanding doubting no more resolute sweeping the world turn from lands retrospective recording proofs of the past from the singers that sing the trailing glories of the past from the chants of the feudal world the triumphs of kings slavery cast turn to the world the triumphs reserved and to come give up that backward world leave to the singers of hitherto give them the trailing past but what remains remains for singers for you wars to come are for you lo how the wars of the past have duly inured to you and the wars of the present also inure then turn and be not alarmed o libertad turn your undying face to where the future greater than all the past is swiftly surely preparing for you to the leavened soil they trod 
To the leavened soil they trod, calling, I sing for the last. Forth from my tent, emerging for good, loosing, untying the tent ropes. In the freshness, the forenoon air, in the far-stretching circuits and vistas again to peace restored. To the fiery fields, emanative, and the endless vistas beyond, to the south and the north, to the leavened soil of the general western world to attest my songs, to the Alleghenian hills and the tireless Mississippi, to the rocks I calling sing and all the trees in the woods, to the plains of the poems of heroes, to the prairies spreading wide, to the far-off sea and the unseen winds and the sane impalpable air, and responding they answer all but not in words, the average earth, the witness of war and peace, acknowledges mutely, for the prairie draws me close, as the father to bosom broad the sun. The northern ice and rain that began me nourish me to the end, but the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. End of Poems Part 3 Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine End of Drum Taps by Walt Whitman